Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, you are listening to the most electrifying podcast in all of internet radio today. You are listening to the Sports Wire. Today is Monday, December 2nd, 2019. My name is Vinny Apicella. Thank you for downloading or listening or subscribing wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And uh, I'm back again today from a cold and snowy New England, West Hartford, Connecticut to be exact. Um, Although the storm didn't pack as big of a punch as we were led to believe, although that seems to be the norm nowadays. Uh, However, it's still cold and icy out there and the snow is supposed to be starting back up within an hour or so. Um, But anywho... Uh, I wanted to thank you all again for uh, downloading and subscribing wherever you find your favorite podcasts, especially here on Anchor.fm. So today, I am going to go through, it's been going through, uh, I mean, throughout the past number of years, um, and especially lately on Twitter, the subject of people's Mount Rushmore of wrestling comes up. And, you know, I chime in and I put it in. It's, and it, honestly, it's very hard to go through, um, you know, very hard to think about four people in the entirety of the wrestling industry and history that could, that could comprise... Your Mount Rushmore, because it's only four heads. You know, the, you know, some of the greatest presidents, of course, but in terms of wrestling, how do you go through the entirety of, of wrestling history? And it's always changing. I'm not going to say it's not, because there could be somebody come, that comes along tomorrow or somebody that's currently active that'll be there in 20 years and, you know, surpass somebody that you have on, the, on your Mount Rushmore now. Um... But you look back in history, and there are dozens of, you know, people that could potentially be on a Mount Rushmore of wrestlers. And that's not even taking into consideration your personal favorites, your personal bias of of who's had the biggest impact in your life. Because, you know, for me, and and I'm just going to say, you know, right out, and it's, you know, there could be pe- guys that you're the biggest front mark, biggest fans of, that didn't really have that big of an impact in the history of wrestling. You know, or guys that weren't the greatest wrestlers, but, you know, you live, you related to them somehow. You know, that's one of the biggest things. So, you know, taking all that into consideration... You know, and putting together and looking at it, and everybody's Mount Rushmore is going to be different. And you know, you could look at it and you could separate it too. You could do the Mount Rushmore of tag teams, the Mount Rushmore of male wrestlers, the Mount Rushmore of females, the Mount Rushmore of managers. And, anyways, over this week, starting tonight, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I am going to go through one type of Mount Rushmore per day, okay, and we'll go tonight with the Mount Rushmore of female superstars, then tomorrow be the Mount Rushmore of tag teams, then Wednesday will be the Mount Rushmore of managers, Thursday will be the Mount Rushmore of promoters slash executives, and then Friday will be the Mount Rushmore of men, of male superstars. And, and the reason why I'm doing that is because, like I said, and honestly, not many people talk about the Mount Rushmore. And, and there's even more. You can do the Mount Rushmore of commentators. Um, although some of, the, some of them might overlap. You know, and, and one person in particular, you know, and that kind of gives new life to somebody who might not necessarily make it on... One, one Mount Rushmore, and, and I'll just use an example. Jerry Lawler, you know. And to think, you know, you don't, he's not necessarily a name that comes up when people talk about their Mount Rushmores because 
you know, if you're depending on the generation that you grew up in, okay, he was usually in Memphis. And during the territories, he was in Memphis for the most part. So somebody on the West Coast who grew up in the territories wouldn't necessarily see him until, you know, the, until AWA got started on TV and Jerry Lawler was the AWA, champ, AWA champion um, or on pay-per-view. Uh, or, again, if you're, you know, a younger generation person, the only, the only way you'd probably know Jerry Lawler is from his WWE run and his commentary. So, that's discounting the years with Andy Kaufman and, you know, so on and so forth of him being in Memphis, in the USWA. And, and you know, and then another person that, that, that could potentially be on two different ones, Jim Cornette. He definitely on Mount Rushmore, uh, you know, could be on the Mount Rushmore of managers, but also of promoters. You know, he ran Smoky Mountain. He ran OVW for a time, um, you know, and and also he could be on commentary as well. So there are guys that could overlap. Uh, so today is going to be my Mount Rushmore of female superstars and Again, it's going to be tough to just choose four because you can look at the landscape of today's female superstars and, you know, how great they are. And you could literally take four names from today's females. And I'm not just talking about WWE, you know, and put together a great, you know, Mount Rushmore. But then that's discounting the past. And, and while there may not be many, quote-unquote, divas, you know, on, on the list or, or even in the, in a discussion for a Mount Rushmore, but you can't, um, you, you can't discount the, uh, uh, you can't discount women like Trish Stratus and Lita, you know, and that takes up half right there if you're, if you're going to include them. Um, you know, and, and contrary to popular belief or contrary to popular opinion, uh, the fabulous Mula, you know, and Mae Young. I mean, and if you go back and check out their, uh, their entire careers, you know, starting from like Mae Young in the 1940s, you know, the, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And again, a lot of that was just sideshow in the territory stuff. And then there are younger people that probably only know them for the Attitude Era. And, you know, Mae Young giving birth to a hand and, you know, and, and Mula and Mae Young together. So a lot, of, a lot of people won't know what their, you know, their true, uh, you know, uh, contributions to the industry were. So it's tough to, to, tough to, you know, kind of put that out there, but all right. So, and, and then like I said, in today's, today's environment, you can easily name off for, for, for the top WWE women, you know? Um, but anyways, here is my Mount Rushmore of female, of women wrestlers, female superstars, okay, again, very tough, but, and, uh, you know, and it's subject for, subjects for debate, subjects for conversation, so if you have your Mount Rushmore of Women Superstars, I, I, I would firmly request that you email, us, email me at sportswireaudio at gmail.com, or, you know, uh, at me on Twitter, at sportswireaudio, or at vapselswe, Either way, but here we go. Mount Rushmore of female stars. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm trying to put it together as well and, and, and look through history. So, number one on my Mount Rushmore of women stars would be Trish Stratus. And the reason why I say that is because as a... Uh, starting out as a manager, valet, diva, okay, she definitely learned the craft and became 
not only in the WWE Hall of Fame, not even, you know, looking at that, because WWE Hall of Fame could be very subjective. I mean, Coco Beware is in there, for, for, for God's sakes. <laughs> but um, her, you know, contributions definitely helped out, you know, along with Lita, definitely took the women's, uh, rev- and, and it wasn't even called the women's revolution at that time, but definitely the evolution of the women wrestling um, took it to a whole new level back in, you know, the quote-unquote reality era. Trish Stratus and Lita were the first diva is the first women to main event a Monday Night Raw, um, which, you know, was unheard of at that point in time. And, you know, yes, yeah, she had the sex appeal. Yes, yeah, she had, you know, she had the stupid angles where Vince made her bark like a dog and, you know, get on all fours and this and that. But you know what? She she paid her due. She took her chop. She, she played her character. And then when it came time to actually get involved in the ring, she personified the women wrestler at the time, uh, the female superstar at the time. And if it wasn't for her and her and Lita together, uh, there may never have been a women's revolution um, to, to start for, you know, women like Charlotte and Sasha and Becky and Bailey and the four, you know, the four horsewomen. So Trish Stratus is the first on my Mount Rushmore. Second name on my Mount Rushmore of women's wrestlers is Alundra Blaze, uh, or Medusa, if you will. Uh, Deborah Maselli, who started off her career, you know, in Japan. And if you listen to some of her older podcasts or some of the interviews that she's done with, like, Sean Mooney and stuff, um, she goes through on how she learned to wrestle in Japan. And at that time... You know, there were women wrestlers in Japan, but they weren't that... The, the, the American women wrestling wrestlers weren't going over to Japan like the guys were. Um, so for her to learn in the Japanese dojo and to learn that style of wrestling and then to come into the AWA and WCW and eventually the WWF or WWE um, and then back to WCW. Uh, and then... You know, she she was a very ahead of her time. Um, I mean, if if she was hitting her prime now, she would be all into it. So definitely, she had a huge role to play in 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 the popularization and you know the evolution of women wrestlers. It was the the unfortunate truth to it was when she was in the WWE. There were no challengers for it. They had, WWE had to bring in Japanese women wrestlers, you know, for one-offs or f- for, you know, certain storylines. You know, Bull DeCano coming in or Ronda Singh coming down from Canada or, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, former, you know, women wrestlers like Leilani Kai at WrestleMania 10. You know, so women that were either past their prime or women that, nobody in America had heard of, uh, had to come in to face her. When she went to WCW and, you know, after, during the Monday Night War and dropped the women's title in the garbage, that's because WWE let her go as, bud, as a budget cut. And, uh, you know, she went down there, and, and what happened? There was re- really no uh, competition for her down there either. You know, they had they'd brought in Miss Jackie, but I, I, I think at that time... Medusa was off for a while or whatever, and then she came back part with uh, Evan Courageous, and um, or and then she was part of the Randy Savages, you know, Team Macho later on. But there were real, there was really no good competition for it because WCW never really had women wrestlers, uh, you know, and and at a, at a time where. The women in the in in the industry were focusing on tits and ass, and you know the nitro girls or the divas or whatever. She personified women's wrestling. Um, so, Alundra Blaze, uh, Medusa. I'll call her Medusa. So Medusa is up on the Mount Rushmore of women wrestlers for me. Third name. <clears throat> I've got to say it. The fabulous Mula, and. Taking out the rumor and innuendo surrounding her 
personal life or the 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 controversy surrounding whether or not she was a pimp or or or, or you know stole money from the girls or whatever and and there's a whole documentary on on her f- from Dark Side of the Ring. You know, whether you choose to believe it or you choose to not believe it, I'm not going to weigh in on that. And I've talked about it before. Um, I don't know enough about the back the, the backstory of the fabulous, fabulous Mula to say yes or no. But her contributions to the industry, you know, at a t- again, you know, she was the basically the first major promoter of women's wrestlers. She was the booker. She would send the girls down to the territory. She would train the girls in her compound, you know, Moolah Way or whatever it was, um, <clears throat> Moolah Avenue, you know, and she was, you know, and, and she was the first woman to actually live the life of a wrestler, uh, of a contemporary wrestler. She had like, I think, three or four divorces or whatever the case is. And, you know, she held the women's championship for something unheard of. 20 years, 30 years, she actually had the title with her picture on it. Um, To the point where when Vince McMahon saw that someone else was getting too big for her britches, i.e. Wendy Richter, you know, was getting, you know wanted more money, wanted equal pay, you know, who, what happened? They screwed the original screw job and they, you know, Mula screwed Wendy Richter and, you know, uh, as the spider lady. And that's, again, that's a whole big thing I'm not going to get into. But the fact is that Vince knew Mula would draw the money and she was the, you know, the precursor to all women's wrestlers. Up until Mula, the women's wrestlers were just a sideshow. And it was Mula who, who got them more into the mainstream. Um, you know, and, and the fact that she came back during the Attitude Era at, you know, 60, 70 years old and was taking bumps, you know, <laughs> like going through tables and, and everything, just a testament to her drawing power and her staying power. In professional wrestling. Uh, so Fabulous Mula is the third name up on there. And then the fourth name. Um, is a tough one. Because you look at, again, the history. But. I've got to say. The fourth name on my Mount Rushmore of female superstar, female wrestlers. Would be. Ronda Rousey, and I know that's a controversial pick, I, I, and I know I might get some hate tweets for it, but, and I urge you to email me your list of, you know, of, of top, of, of Mount Rushmore female superstars, sportswireaudio at gmail.com, tweet me at SWE on Twitter, or at sportswireaudio on Twitter, um, I want to hear your feedback. But Ronda Rousey, and the reason why I say that, and that, and, and that leaves out a ton of, you know, people. And Ronda Rousey only had one year in WWE. So how did she make the Mount Rushmore? Well, she's probably the, one of the most decorated women combat athletes in the world. And she, her coming to WWE, first in, at WrestleMania, what was it, 31? Uh, in in San, Santa Clara uh, at the 49er Stadium, Levi Stadium, you know when she hopped the rail and got into the ring with The Rock and uh, Triple H and Stephanie, and that was kind of set the, the teaser to what would happen at WrestleMania 34 uh, when she teamed with Kurt Angle to face Triple H and Stephanie, and you know her her big signing. You know, full-time superstar, multi-year, you know, multi-year contract with WWE. And she was the first big-name crossover female from the UFC to the WWE. You know, she had a lot, you know, she was influenced by Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Obviously, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Um, And it was because of her name value, you know, 
And a lot of people say, well, she didn't pay her dues and she wasn't in NXT and she just came in and automatically made to the main roster. But she trained her ass off. Okay? She wasn't the best talker and she's not the best talker because in the UFC she didn't really have to worry about cutting promos. But she got the work done in the ring. She trained her ass off with Natalia. You know, she got the women's championship. It was her name value that helped propel Charlotte and Becky Lynch to the uh, main event of WrestleMania this past year. And dare I say, without Ronda Rousey coming to WWE, even for the one-year run that she was there, and she's still part of the WWE company, you know, she's still on Total Divas, and you know, which I hate that show, but she's still on there, and she'll be back soon. And she, her influences with the Four Horsewomen of MMA, you know, Shayna Baszler and Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir coming over to NXT and WWE, and I'm really looking forward to a Four Horsewomen feud between the Four Horsewomen of NXT and the Four Horsewomen of the MMA. Uh, so with Ronda Rousey. On there, it's just, it, it just makes sense. Because her contribution to the business was taking it more mainstream. And I, and, and I dare say that without Ronda Rousey's influence, Charlotte may, Charlotte may never have gotten the opportunity to pose for the uh, body issue for, for Sports Illustrated. And, you know, the, the women wrestling isn't, wouldn't be at, you know, the place it is now. So... There, there you have it. The, the, my Mount Rushmore of, fit, of women's wrestlers. Trish Stratus, the fa- uh, Medusa, the Fabulous Mula, and Ronda Rousey. And so there we go. Uh, feel free. I, I definitely want you to subscribe. Send us a five-star review. And follow me on Twitter at SWE. Follow Sportswire on Twitter and Instagram at Sportswire Audio. Uh, email me, please. Send me your feedback, especially about these lists that are upcoming. SportswireAudio at gmail.com. And go ahead and uh, go to SportswireAudio.com. That'll bring you to our anchor.fm page. And from there, you can support the show. You know, help us. Help us out. Thank you for listening. My name is Vinny Abisella. I will see you tomorrow right here on the Sportswire.